Okay, good morning, afternoon, evening, everybody. Uh, thank you for joining. This is the GSOC uh, workshop uh, related to um, plugin health score uh, project idea and clarification questions. So we have on the call currently Adrian and Jake who are mentors for the project and we have Biraj who is one of the uh, contributors interested in that uh, uh, in that project and I myself Jean-Marc Mason I'm org admin and mentor for another project uh, there so um, Without any other ado, I propose that we start. Draj has new questions. Um, just a question, how do we start? And I leave the word to Jake and Adrian and Draj. How do we proceed? Uh, I think we can uh, go ahead and um, Draj, you can, I, I, I don't find the new question on the initial document. Uh, no. Maybe I'm not looking at the correct one, uh, but um, I guess we, we can go ahead and let Diraj ask uh, the questions and maybe I can, can I... I can share maybe the document. I think okay. I have the same. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking at the same, but I don't... Maybe it's because it's floated in the... In, in no, the no, it's at the beginning. I, I see them as... Uh, oh, oh, okay. Uh, yeah, okay. You, you, get, you have them? I, I don't know. I have the first question is how do we score plugins? Um, which I don't think is okay. Uh, I don't have that's odd. I don't have that. Maybe do you see the document? Was, yeah, yeah. Sure. Uh, that's no here on okay, no, I, I don't know. I needed to refresh. I don't know why, but okay. That, that's fine. Sorry for sorry everyone for that. Okay. Um, I'll stop sharing then. Or uh, maybe, well, I don't know. Do you want me to share the document? No. Yeah, that might be good, uh, just so we can all look at it. I'll do, I'll be yeah. note taker. I'll take Mark's place today and be note taker. Okay, so I'll, I'll share check. then. So would you like me to share the screen? You want Josh. to, you want to share the screen, Drash? Yes. <laughs> okay, yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm okay, go ahead. Okay. <laughs> Great. So, uh, oh, is it visible? Yes, it works. Um, so okay. I guess for the first question, uh, the idea is to uh, about the, the, like we said last week, uh, we want to have the rules would have weight, which would be um, uh, how much the rule is important at the time. I guess the uh, we want the opinion to be uh, to get opinions from everyone in the community. So that would be inside the uh, developer mailing list. I would I would say. Uh, to get uh, um, feedbacks from all active maintainers or all maintainers at all. Um, is there a better way to get that? I don't. I don't to say we have a PR to review and and things like that because it can be more difficult for people to understand and have. Um, a, a point in a, in a pull request, I guess the mails would be uh, better, uh, but that's my uh, only my opinion. Did you have yeah. did you have something in uh, in mind, Diraj? Yes. So similar to this, like trying to understand uh, the process of getting the feedback from the community or response from the community. So as we discussed last time, we would be getting their opinions on how much weight should we add for a particular parameter. So we can maybe 
another way of getting that info from them would be like maybe make a google form and then give it to them and in those google form there will be question like how important do you think a jenkins file presence needs to be there in a repository and mark it from a score of 1 to 5 most likely least likely not much likely very likely and then neutral something like that and all the responses will go to a spreadsheet uh, like excel of some kind and then from there we can do some things one of the ways yeah i i do like the idea uh we would need to have that in a in a timely manner so to 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 not have too 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 long before we ask the question and get the results but that's a very good idea to have kind of a, a um an an a feedback from the that would be better than emails i guess we we could always publish the question on an email thread and publish the response on the same but have that in a form that's a very good point um i uh one side note i don't think having a neutral uh point i do like the 1 to 5 or 0 uh, to 5 or something like that but i don't feel like having a neutral answer is a good idea because um we want people to take a side and uh, and if we offer a neutral um, uh, answer uh, someone might feel like i don't uh, might think i don't know so i'll put the neutral and then we will have all uh, neutral or mostly neutral answer but we want people to take side and also we have to remember that that would be for the first set and only for those because in the long term as we said last week the weight of the rules would evolve during the time because for example at the start having a jenkins file is very important i already saw that out of the uh, uh, 1800s plugins only 600, uh, 600 of them don't have a jenkins file but at mm. some point uh, yeah at some at some point more plugins will have them and so we will be able to say now it may, may now it's more important than ever or maybe now it's less impo important than in the past so the weight would evolve also uh with the time um uh, because we could also say um now uh having java 11 support is uh important but having java 17 is important and we also we could also have that tight to the um to when we want the project globally the entire project to be only running on java 11 or only java uh, 17 or any other versions and so we could say for now it's a good thing to have java 17 support and maybe in one year one uh, 18 months we will say Having Java, uh, having Java 17 support is mandatory, or not mandatory, but very important because we are about to put the whole project uh, in um, uh, to be to be able to support Java 17. So I, I I think we need to also have that kind of notion that the the scoring, the weight of the rules, will evolve um, uh, with the time. But I, I really do like your idea of having a, a, a form and a, a survey uh, and get and build kind of the, the, the weight based on based on that. Yeah, I really like That's that idea. Cool. It's an easy way to keep, you know, data, to, to log the data, essentially. Um, my one concern, I guess, with the survey is getting people to take the survey. Um, I mean, I mean, I guess it would be the same as responding to an email, but um, in my experience, that's always the tricky part of surveys is, is getting people to actually take the survey. <laughs> yeah, I, I agree. I, I think what we could do is try to have the survey small, uh, not have not to have uh, like 
20 rules to uh, to wait at a time but if we can get something uh, the survey to be small and quick to answer maybe we can have more feedback uh, and uh, but that's also something i, I don't we, we cannot yeah. um, there, there's understand. if i may uh, suggest two things uh, we can set the system in place and do a quick run of it but I, I wouldn't like uh, the, the uh, contributors to be uh, blocked in the development uh, for that. So it's, it's a task that we can do on the product itself, but, and it's important to have a, a general point of view of the community, and we can put mm -hmm. something in place to do that regularly. But uh, during the summer, we need to move uh, to move ahead. Yeah, I, I agree. And if we don't have any answer for the uh, for this uh, summer uh, summer of code, uh, we can we can go ahead and have um, all at the same weight, uh, yeah. all the rule having the same weight by default, like something having a, a, a one, and then we can and if we get some feedback at some point, then we can readjust them and the the generation of the scoring would um, uh, if we do the things correctly the the once we uh, mark the weight of the rule uh, to be different uh, we would have a score uh, computation uh, mm -hmm. automatically or we could trigger that computation with a new scoring and should be should be uh, if we do things correctly, it should be simple enough. But for, um, for sure, if we don't have any answer, we, we can by default go and say all the rules are the same um, importance and and go for go for with that at the beginning. Uh, we will get some strange results. I'm I'm sure of that. Um, but in the but also it will be a good way to show that answering. The, the, the survey is important and also to see uh, maybe a rule that we think is uh, simple enough like I, I, I'm sure that everyone here uh, thought that uh, more than 80% of the plugins were having a, a Jenkins file a Jenkins, but I, yeah. I, can, I, I, I can assure you it's not so yeah, I'm um, impressed uh, so that that will show us, and it's an easy win also for any plugin maintainer to uh, raise the score of the of of a plugin. That will be also an, an easy win to just add the Jenkins file. It's pretty easy. The contribution guide uh, that Mark and you, Jean-Marc, built um, are uh, well documented. Is the 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 way to the way add to the, the yeah? It's it's really easy and. Um, well documented so anyone can can have that and it's an easy win for anyone for any new contributors sure for sure yes did i did i answer your question diraj because i think we went over all the places but no, no, you definitely answered my question and uh, i got what to expect and what to do if unexpected thing happens like if we do not get any get any responses as well so my question would be on again uh, not again but uh, on the frequency of this changes of weight so as you said uh, we can have some changes of these weights as per uh, a moment when we feel that java 11 or something version should be preferred so that frequency would be like would not be very too frequent, right? Uh, it would be similar to an election, like happening in a specified period of time. Because uh, if we make it, yes, just, if you make it too frequent, it would look like we are helping them to customize it as per you want. So that's not fair, right? I personally would see it every well, six months or every year. Is it? This so uh, I didn't I... really think, yeah, I, I re didn't really think about the frequency of the screen uh, and the weight uh, adaptation. Um, I don't think that during this summer we, I think during this summer we will change the scoring, the weight 
a lot. Not every day, but I guess at least once a week because uh, either we get feedback or not or stuff like that. I don't want to say that we want we start the, the, the summer of code with a set of rules weighted at a specific point and start and and we will finish the summer of code with the same with the same uh, rules and weight. What I'm uh, but in the long term, I guess um, I, maybe six months is it's it's um, it's big. Too long. Uh, I would say yeah, too long. I, I would say every LTS, so every twelve weeks, um, we can review the weight. It doesn't mean that the weight of the rules would change. It's just that we would readjust them. That's a good idea. Because uh, because I think that um, within the LTS period, we saw in the past that we were introduce, uh, introducing a few changes in core. I'm, I'm thinking about Java 11. I'm thinking about uh, um, UI, about Guava uh, and, and things like that. And that can also be the source of new rules let's say and also and see how we can plan from that and again 12 weeks my idea of 12 weeks is just to to review them doesn't mean that they will change and for sure we don't want them to change every day because we want some stability in the scoring um so that um yeah uh but the so that the for the weight of the rule but for the um generation of the score that is another question, and I think it should be as soon as possible, as often as possible. But that's not part of the question. How would we take care of notifying maintainers that the rules are changing? I think uh, it, it could be uh, through the mailing list. Um, uh, I think that's uh, the developer mailing list is uh, when you are maintaining your plugins, it's for sure a mailing list that you are um, uh, uh, subscribed to. Yeah. Um, I don't. I don't. I don't. To be honest, I don't really see any other asynchronous communication um, channel than the mailing list. So my. Uh, yeah, these are the things that we need to to work. Yeah. To work on. Yeah. Well, I mean, because I guess it depends, right? If we, I guess this is kind of dependent on how we display the information, right? Um, yes. Because if we, if it's, you know, it probably wouldn't make much sense to like notify people on the, the plugin site. But if we were to, I don't know, throw some sort of badge or something like that, you know, where developers work, you know, hey, just as a, a notifier, you know, I don't know if that would happen in, in GitHub or whatever, but um, some sort of badge that says, hey, check out the new weights and of the criteria. A, a question that I have um, in, in the various proposals uh, that were made up to now, uh, there is a way foreseen that people can look what is what are the components and the weight that was used. So this can be seen by everybody. Is there a Correct. display? Um, I think um, so. I, that's part of a, a question, a data presentation on. We have a, a few lines after. I think, um, and there's two different uh, um, places where this. I think there's two different um, places where the score should be displayed. One is in the plugin manager, so in each co um, controller, because we want to help users when they choose a plugin to install. So that's useful to have the score in that page. Uh, but yes, we have to discuss about, uh, is it expensive, how, how we uh, fetch the, the data and so on, and what we what we uh, include in that data. And the other one is the plugin site. And the plugin site is, I think, the only place where we should have 
the entire um, uh, details. On the controller, yeah. we shouldn't have um, the each each uh, rule, uh, the score for each rule, and so on, because we don't at at that moment. I don't think we care. Oh, it's well phrases. I'm sorry. It's not that we don't care. It's I don't think that's the most important one. I think if we want to understand why the plugin has a specific score, the plugin manager as a link is already as already a, an hyperlink to to put you on the plugin site of the plugin with the plugin details and on that page we can show all the details about the score about why is it an a plus why is it a b um and so on and even be more specific because we i hear i'm, I'm saying a uh, uh, letters but we could have the percentage and say the plugin is a plus with 95 percent uh mm. 99 percent of uh, uh validation and here are the rules that are not validated here are the rules that are validated not validated so um from um uh, from past discussion I had with Daniel, the update center.json file that is uh, fetched by um, um, controllers and used for the plugin manager is already quite heavy. Uh, it's already quite huge. So I, I, I don't want to put more data in it than it is required. I don't even want to, I, I uh, even not sure we should put the data in this one. Yeah. In this, it should be somewhere, maybe in that file, maybe in an, another one that the controller is fetching uh, at the moment. I don't know, but I, I don't want that to be um, overcrowded. I don't want it to be a pain to pass for anyone uh, for the controller and so on. Um, yeah. So I, yeah, uh, that's some detail we want. Maybe we we need to look into a bit more. The, um, uh, but yeah, um, what what did you think about that idea of having two different places, whether and not having the same details on each one? I, I really like that, that idea. I, I mean, I think it brings down the cost, right? And if, if all the controllers are getting or fetching um, is just like the composite score for each plugin, I think we could keep it rather small. Um, and of course, you know, maybe just one link somewhere um, within the instance that says, hey, you know, if you need more details, go check out, you know, the plugin site where you can actually view all the details of the plugin. Um, I think that's a, it could be even the, the the badge of the score that we put in the plugin plugin manager badge or the later of of the plugin man, on the plugin manager on the controller we could have a link there to see to say more details and that bring that puts you in the plugin site on the correct tab or something like that if you go to plugins.jenkins.io and any plugin you, you there's already a few tabs there uh, to see the dependency of the plugins and, um, uh, and and stuff like that, and it's already used uh, in, in that kind of idea because um, on the uh, on the controllers you don't see the contributors of the of a specific plugin. Uh, you don't see uh, the dependency of that specific plugin, but you hmm. see that in in the in the plugin manager, in the um, plugin page. Um, right. And you have the releases, you have the issues, you have the dependencies uh, and the, the documentation part uh, of the, on, on the plugin site. So we could have a new, uh, a new tab saying score, uh, have, a, have a badge somewhere in the page saying, this is the score and more details there. And so it it would it will yeah I think simplify the controller uh, and um, also not limit us 
because if we want to only in the controller, then we will be we will have some size constraints and mm -hmm. we will need to be to do some sacrifices on what are the details that we are showing. If we get rid of that constraints of uh, size constraints, then we can uh, then we can be a bit more um, uh, permissive with the type of data we show. Yeah, I do. I really do like that 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 um, example. Uh, yeah, yeah. I think you know this is exactly you know what we showed last week or what I shared last week, and I think it describes exactly what you were saying there. Having a new tab that would give you all the details yep. of the plugin house for. Um, and this is what exactly. would be linked from you know what you were saying, I believe, from the control. Yeah, yeah. That that's exactly what I what what I was potentially mentioning. Uh, we could also have links to for for each rule. We could have example on how to fix that, um, how to improve, how to um, how to, for example, add, um, you have a, a very you, you have. Uh, number of PR open, if I can read. Right. Yeah, it says number of PRs it, it, open current and then a rolling average. And yeah, exactly. And just we could, examples. We could, exactly, it's just example, but we could have links to the open PRs. We could have uh, for a uh, plugin is up for adoption. That is an easy fix. That's an easy link as, uh, to explain what is, why your plugin is up for adoption, how to solve that. Um, we spoke about depend about. We could say if if it's if depend about is not activated, then here's a link. Here, here is the documentation on how to activate it. And then the plugin would have a better score. But so. now I need to defend a little bit the contributors. Uh, we can do that in various iterations. So it's not mm -hmm. something that needs to be done. We need to, to prepare things that we can add it and know how to add it. But yeah. uh, I, I, I don't want that. Uh, well, I, I would not recommend that contributor, contributors go to attack a big, big mountain. In the oh, no, no, no. And oh. also the uh, idea that uh, I, I spoke with uh, Basil, um, about about this project and his idea is also to uh, the the tool that we build maybe should also when a, a plugin is um, not validating a rule we should try to open the PR to make the plugin validate the rule and for to something make like the life the, easier yeah exactly and but it could be aut uh, automatic when um, it's an easy fix. For example, yeah. having the parent pom up to date, we could we can make the upgrade, test it, and if the build pass, then we can submit the PR. But if it, if the PR is not green out of the box, it's more difficult, and that's not something that we can do for yeah. old plugins. Tiraj, you wanted to say something. Yes, thank you. So would it help if we also link for a particular parameter, let's say updating a parent form, if it's listed in this page. So can we link it to the adopt the plugin tutorial that Mark and Darren are working on when it gets published on the site? We can up, uh, attach that particular section's link with this parameter. So, and since it's uh, explained there very well, uh, even for new contributors, so they will be knowing how to do what to do. Yeah, that, that's that's the idea. Yes, to have the to have the documentation or directly on the report here saying the plugin is not validating that rule. Here's why, and here is how you can fix it. So yeah. have, having all those details in one place so that um, uh, we can make a, a bit e the life a bit easier. And even for any co new contributor, someone that is um, uh, s uh, wants to install a plugin, see the score is uh, good but not great, and then we can uh, uh, is looking into why the plugin has a not so great score. 
and see that it's because the pound pump is not up to date and then maybe that can generate a new contributor uh, mm -hmm. uh, the, the in incentive for a new contributor to attend to that plugin um, because it's from time to time it's not that difficult to just update the pound pump um, of course it's not always the case but that 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 depends did we cover your new questions, Raj? Uh, about data presentation, yes, one part of it. And uh, about data delivery, yes, one part of it. <laughs> so let me, uh, I had one point to add in the previous section about where we were discussing how would we notify maintainers that the rules have changed. So since Adrian says that we can change the rules maybe with every LTS release, so what do we think about notifying them via the change log or would it be effective like as an entry that hey are the new rules uh, please go check them out or would not be that impactful i like that idea but so you you meant about the change log on the uh, on LTS. the lts yeah Yes, which goes on the Jenkins.io website. Mm -hmm. So there we can have another entry about scores changing. Yeah. We could have an entry on the LTS change log saying uh, how the score are now uh, evaluated. That's mm -hmm. a very good point. Like, uh, but I think that the maintainers of the plugins should be notified in advance uh, because when we I'm I'm just I, I I'm sorry for that. I didn't think about that uh, about the frequency of the weight evaluation, uh, re-evaluation, yeah, before. So that I'm thinking on on the on the fly here. Uh, but I think that if we change on the LTS, even though I, I still like that idea, it means that one day a, a plugin could be an A plus, and then the just after the first LTS release, we have a plugin that is a, a B minus, and mm -hmm. that and uh, and so the 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 maintainers would wouldn't have a lot of time to readjust and to apply to the new rules or to the new weight and so on. Yes. And I think yes. I, I think we we it's not a situation that we would like to put the maintainers against the wall and force them force them mm -hmm. uh, in this situation. So I, I think we need to have a way to, we need to be ahead of time with the rules. We need to be at least one one quarter ahead and, uh, and say uh, for the next LTS in, in 12 weeks, this is how we want to score or to uh, weight that specific rule and maybe we should have a, um, a way to say um, if you want to evaluate your plugin against that uh, here's what you need to do and then they could get a score with the next set of rules or next set of weight um, so that they can they have 12 weeks basically to yeah. To move, to prepare, and again, it's not. I don't. I don't think that we will change the weight every twelve twelve weeks. I think we need to reevaluate them. So, meaning maybe we will say, okay, we look into them. It's still good. It's still what we want. So we don't touch them. So maybe uh, they won't change every twelve weeks. It's sure that every twelve weeks we looked at them. We looked at them. Would we have a good idea of the rule changes, or I guess if we evaluate rules somewhere in the middle with like weeklies and, you know, let's say, you know, the sixth week, right? That gives them, you know, five or six weeks to adjust their plugin prior to the next LTS where it would really, you know, take change. Does that make any sense? Uh, yeah, but again, the, the 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 I don't think the the rules 
I, I'm just speaking about the LTS because uh, for a, a, a time, um, a, a milestone in in the time, I'm not. They they won't be applied to a specific LTS. It's not. Um, uh, we will have a rule. We we can have a rule that say the the plugin needs to be require a recent enough Jenkins version. That for sure. And then that that's also evolve every twelve weeks because. Uh, the LTS change, but what about? Um, I'm 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 not sure to to that we should say okay. So on the next LTS, this is uh, on, on this new LTS. This will be the new score, the new scoring system. I think we need we need to be open and say to the community. Um, the next LTS, we decided to reevaluate the weight of the rules for the next LTS, and here is the new weight, and that's how it will. Um, that uh, this is how it could uh, affect your uh, plugins, and we should have the um, production kind of uh, generation of the score and the. Uh, um, a pre-production development mm -hmm. one so that maintainers can evaluate their plugin with the essentially run it on demand right is what yes. you're right. basically saying yeah, I, I think so uh jake and adrian i'm looking at the clock so uh i no, think yeah. these are are important uh discussion and i think it's important that uh uh, the submitters will know about this discussion. What I want to be sure, because it will be probably the last workshop that we'll able to organize before you have to submit your proposals. Mm -hmm. So uh, are there questions or doubts uh, related to things that need to be in your proposal? So that you have a do you want to explore subjects there? Yes, yes, I do. A few of them, uh, just I think two of them actually. So, so first one is regarding the same idea. And Trash, yes. I'm just going to, for fairness, so uh, I, I then would like uh, and to listen to Aditya also, if if he has questions and, and so on. So we need now to use our time wisely. Raj, go ahead. What is your question? And I'm don't go too much in the answers. So yes. Just, you know, go ahead. I think Aditya is uh, one of the maintainers. Oh, sorry, mentors. I sorry, I didn't get that. Uh, so I was suggesting that Aditya, I think, is one of the mentors, right? Yeah. Yes. Ah, okay. Good. Yeah. Okay. Yes. I, I forget okay, the nice. names. I'm I'm sorry. So okay, good. <laughs> no problem. Uh, welcome. So, Drash, go ahead. And if uh, Aditya wants to add things or has, uh, he can raise his hand. Okay. So I misunderstood that. Go ahead, Drash. Yes. Thank you. So, I understood the discussion about how are we going to display it on the plugin side, as shown in this screenshot. Here, uh, my question is around another way of. Another place for it to dis, uh, display the things. It, it does not work. It just I made it up. So uh, it's one of those hackathon ideas we have at 3 a.m. which does not work out. So just wanted to discuss it with you very quickly. Uh, uh, I've written some parts of it in my proposal and I'm trying to scroll to it. One second. Yes, this one. So, so it would be like a new website. So its whole aim would be to presenting, comparing ways of improving the health score of all the plugins. And uh, when you visit it, it would look something like uh, like fully score related, and there would be like bulletins and like real time kind of things going on, saying that. Uh, congratulations to XYZ contributor for increasing the health score of the parameterized trigger plugin from this to this. So uh, uh, this plugin saw a 15 point increase in its health score thanks to this. 
so my aim here is to make it more contributor little bit more contributor uh, centric kind of thing so that even they can see it so that ultimately it implies more contribution from their end but i understand the negative side of it is like why do we even need to build it it's like uh, overkill so curious to know what you think i think uh, jake you had a point about that uh, the fear to make it uh, a bit too, too much uh, uh, um, how do you, how did you i think you you uh, a game make it too much yeah game gamification or, yeah. 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 gamification yeah certainly and, the gamification aspect and you know to another i think with having it in the plugin site versus something like that, I think we, we kill two birds with one stone, right? I mean, we're, we're taking care of the maintainers and the end users, right? The end users get a glimpse into the plugin house for as well. I don't know how we'd, you know, sell it or, or get, I don't know if, if users would be allowed to go to this health.jenkins.io, but um, I think we're adding something that's outside of their normal user flow, right? If we, if we, um, you know, if we keep it within the plugin site, that's already kind of part of the user flow. It's already, you know, ingrained with them and it's, it's just natural. It feels a little bit more natural. And I tend to agree here, uh, having another portal for anyone, for a person to, uh, to go to and see that kind of details um and i'm not sure uh, if, even though it's good to see a plugin going from uh, a d to a, a b plus or something like that i don't think that we should um uh we should uh because the uh, side effect of that is also showing plugins going to a b to from a b to a c because we changed the weight and it's not a shame and we don't want to I don't want that screen to to start feeling like uh, we put shame on, on on a plugin because of something that is out of the maintainer's control or out of the uh, maybe uh, because the maintainers is starting a new job. I changed focus uh, is not um, focused on Jenkins anymore. That can happen, and it's not something that we should uh, we should. Uh, uh, we should put a disgrace on. Yeah, so uh, I, I don't really, um, it's a personal feeling here. I don't really like the, the idea of showing uh, a plugin X uh, gain 15 points or stuff like that. Even though it, it can be, I, I do see that it can be rewarding. I don't feel like um, it will be um, uh, in the long term or even mid term uh, a good thing for the for the community uh, and as jet said it, having that having the the score uh, the else um, uh, details on the plugin site is always is we all we already address the users and the maintainers uh, of the of, of the project so <laughs> I feel like it's it's easier. Uh, we reduce the scope. It's not like reducing the scope. It's just that we we're focusing the scope, and um, we'll give the we will give uh, the, the a good feedback to anyone uh, who wants to see the, those details. And and with John Mark trying to keep us on track here, I won't go too deep into it. I I, I agree and disagree with showing the delta of the plugin mm -hmm. score. Um, I think that is useful information for an end user. It, it may be, you know, it may be have negative consequences for the maintainers, but I think it is rather useful information, um, you know, for the end users. That's all I'll say on that point. So I think maybe we should explore the delta of the plugin score um, and showing that. I don't know. We can explore that for sure. But. Yes, so that makes sense to me because 
it's better to have plugin side because it's fulfilling all our purposes and rather than introducing a new workflow for everyone to get accustomed to and it takes time so this uh, plugin site uh, as a data presentation area would make more sense yeah. Yeah. so another question is about what we have discussed already on update center since it's a uh, uh, very huge we do not want to overburden it with the uh, parameter scores so my question here is uh, about the uh, about what you shared on the email adrian so you you said that uh, if you want the score to be visible on any controller only the score should be added so just needed some clarity on that so um yeah the the uh I, 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 uh, that's my fault. I'm sorry. I don't have a, a strict answer. I complete answer on that. I, I feel like we need to have the data on the controllers. No, I don't feel like I know we need it. Uh, the problem with the current size of the update center, the JSON file is that it's already big. And if we add data to it, uh, it will be, it can, start to be a nightmare um so i i'll need to to discuss with more people to see if uh in the email that you 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 sent uh you got answers because i think you said that we would add a lot of things in the scoring i think if we just add um for each plugin uh, the the a few characters meaning scoring colon 97 or scoring colon 48 then it's limited um it's should be it it should be enough to to display the score efficiently on the uh, plugin manager uh, page and we already have enough details there to uh, on the update center to be able to um link to the plugin uh, site. So uh, I, I feel like we should add it in the update center, but I need to speak with Daniel uh, to make sure that I'm not, not saying anything that is incorrect and that is uh, for him a, a big mistake. I, I need to check with him. Sure. So a little more uh, a small question on what you said is you were suggesting to not include the these kind of yeah. info like sub info right the entire else for parameters object mm -hmm. that you have here i wouldn't mm -hmm. I, I wouldn't add that i would add else score or score or else mm -hmm. and then the, the 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 value of it N okay. not, not more yeah, just yes. just the overall composite score, right? Exactly. The yeah. details would be displayed on the uh, on the um, plugin site. The data would be based on the same source of information for both cases. It's just that on the plugin manager, I don't think we need all the details. Okay. Yes. So just to make sure I'm not confused, I got what you're trying to say here. But my concern here is, uh, so on plugin site, if we want to display information like this, we need to have the score for a particular parameter. So we need to display it or publish it in this uh, JSON file, right? In, in this form. No. So if we do not have it here, so how would we present it on the plugin site? I'm I'm sorry, but on the JSON here, you are the JSON that you're showing here is that is the update center the JSON. Yes. 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 Okay. We would have a different a different file, I think, uh, that the plugin the um, plugin site would use to generate its page. Um, that still uh, needs refining, and, but yeah. Um, and and when you call the tab with the details, you would then ask to download that JSON. Is that the mechanism? 
that they, I, 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 I don't know. I, 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 to, to be totally fair, I don't know exactly how that would work. Mm -hmm. But the idea is, yes, the plugin site would have a different set of data than the uh, plugin manager on the controller. Yes. Uh, so you're trying to say having different files with just like we have it on yes. update center like each a url maps to a different thing that you want to uh, display so there would be like two files uh, published one would only be having just the health score for plugin manager and another uh, path would just uh, be having like the detailed breakdown of these parameters so that they can be used to publish details on the plugin site uh, did i get it right yeah, some something like that. Okay. I, I'm I'm really sorry not having a a, 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 a firm answer here, um, but that that is uh, what I'm thinking of. Yes. I don't okay. have the, the 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 details in head yet. I don't have the uh, complete implementation. I also part of the uh, GSOC. Uh, I, I think that Diraj could mention is in, in his document the actual implementation it, it needs to be reviewed or or further yep. explored. But you say well this would be one of the prototypes that we work. Is is that something? Sure. Yes. I can do that. Because things still need to, to be thought about, and uh, we, we have uh, time for that. OK, we have five more minutes to go. Yes, so I think, I, I think uh, I do not have a specific thing to share, but uh, for just researching about this algorithm, uh, plugin health score calculation algorithm. So, Aditya, you suggested about uh, weighted normalization uh, technique for dynamic nature. nature. So, I tried right. to read some papers about it and watched some tutorial, but it was too much machine learning. <laughs> so, can you like give me some uh, little mm -hmm. bit info on that? How would it look? Yeah, like? yeah. Yeah, sure. So I don't think we'll be able to do that in five minutes, actually. I'll uh, share some blogs, maybe, or some video, or maybe we can have a call set up later also. That's not an issue. Uh, but since you asked about algorithm, actually, I wanted to share that I was thinking of one, and uh, I had created this flow diagram kind of a thing for that. So if it's possible, I'll share the link here and you can maybe open up. I'm not sure who's sharing the screen. Okay. Will that be all right? It's a very simple algorithm, so I don't think it should take more than uh, two, three minutes to go through it. So do you want me to stop sharing? You uh, can share. No, it's fine. Actually, my... Okay. Yeah. So let me know Sorry? which link should I open. Yeah, uh, one second. Oh. So uh, actually I pasted it here uh, for some reason. I think my system got overheated. Uh, uh, can you uh. scroll down? It might be somewhere breaking the code here. If possible, you can paste it down in the same uh, document. Yeah, sorry, in the brainstorm plugin here. Yeah. I, I'm not sure why this is happening. Mysteries of computing. <laughs> After all these years, I'm still wondering. Oh, I see your cursor at the end, but not able to see any data. Yeah, same for me. Yes, I think I see the diagram. Yes. There, okay. Yeah, Aditya. Okay, yeah. yeah. So uh, you can hear me, right? 
Yep. Okay. All good. So uh, I thought about the various probes that we discussed in the last meeting, and uh, I thought that we can divide it into three types. One are booleans that we have, whether a file is present or not. The other one is unbounded non-booleans, or I should have said integers or floats there, but unbounded variables where it can be number of stars in a uh, on the repository. So that's something I think Mark suggested like time. And uh, there are some, there could be bounded non-booleans. And here I don't really have an example for a bounded non-boolean. Someone has a function, but I just thought that that would be a possibility. So for boolean, uh, I was thinking something as simple as the data that divided into plus or minus one, as Dheeraj has suggested in his proposal. And uh, since the weight would be something that is like the mod of the weight would be less than one. So the weight would probably lie between zero and one. So if we multiply with minus one to plus one, the range of the range that you get will be the minus one to plus one. So in the bounded and non-booleans, since it is bounded, it is bounded. That happens. Uh, we can then scale it to minus one to plus one also. For the unbounded case, here I was thinking that some uh, transformation uh, where, uh, especially using some function like sigmoid or tanich, where where these functions they are known to uh, you know bring down a unbounded uh, value to a bounded value. So sigmoid brings to uh, zero to one and tan edge brings to minus one to plus one. So we can use either of them to bring them down to these values, these ranges that we want. And then we can simply take a weighted average where here the weight by weighted average, I mean the number of Boolean, uh, like one upon the number of Booleans into the weight that we got from the Boolean plus one upon the number of uh, bounded non Booleans into the weight, the score that we got from non uh, so on and so forth. So uh, why, uh, why I said this is because uh, in all three places, we'll get something uh, between minus one to plus one, but we uh, also don't want them to give equal weightage to all the three classes because we are not sure, like the number of booleans could be the five or 10 and we'll have probably say like 50 uh, unbounded values. So that shouldn't mean that the boolean value should get equal weightage. So that's why if we divide it by the number of uh, booleans present or the number of unbounded non-booleans present, then it kind of averages the uh, size of our category. And then finally, we can, since this uh, value can again scale to zero to one uh, very easily, then we can just multiply it 100 by 100 and show it as a percentage. So uh, this is what I came up with. Yes, so it, it hmm. makes little sense for now, but I think I can uh, read more about these and experiment and ask you questions on data channel to get more clarity on the algorithm. Yes, definitely. So, but, but thanks a lot for sharing because this is extremely helpful. Okay. No problem. We are, we are reaching the yes. end uh, here. Uh, question, Raj, uh, do you feel equipped uh, for finishing your submission? Yes, totally. I think, I, I think so. And, uh, this will work. Uh, somebody wants to add something at the end of this meeting over time. So I thank everybody uh, for the contribution, note-taking and uh, interesting graph from Ditya. Um, and um, well, we'll close the call now. Yes, thank, thanks a lot everyone. All the best here. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.